Welcome back to The Loft. Um, we have a relentless, intelligent, creative human being in the room right now. <laughs> but before we introduce this special guest, we're going to introduce the room. We got the one and only Ahmad Juwan in the room. Yo, 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 yo. Yes, sir. We got the one and only Poem in the room. <laughs> yes, sir. Peace. I love that. <laughs> but um, the lady of the hour, the lady of the week, lady of the day. Uh, thank you. We have. Aaron Goodman in the room. How are you? Good. How are you? Let's clap it up. Let's clap Thank it you. up. Thank you. Yes. So, I want to start from the beginning, the basics. Mm -hmm. Where are you originally from? Rome. Really? Born You're from three one five. So, like, did you bounce around, or did you just? Uh, I've been Utica, just really Utica and Rome, mm -hmm. and now I'm in Clinton, but just kind of that same twenty mile radius. I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of us from here just kind of yeah. stay around. True, here. true, true. <laughs> so now I gotta ask you. You did it to me on your show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. How do you feel about upstate New York? Oh, okay. So I love all four seasons. Yeah. However, I don't like what comes after this, which is the snow. Mm, fair. Same. <sighs> That's the only thing. I just, I don't know. I love all the seasons. I love summer. But at the same time, I've lived here my whole life, so yeah. I, do I really not like it? You know <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I've been here, but just the snow. I'm just not. Yeah. I never was a winter activity person. Mm. Maybe if I snowboarded and skied, then it might have been a little more enjoyable. But yeah. I'm just, I'm always cold. So when it comes to winter and snow, like hibernation mode. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. I, I still don't know how I'm still out here. <laughs> yeah, all of I my closest say. friends, as you met him, all of them, it was like seven of us, all of them moved out to California. Yeah. I'm the last one. I guess I do like snow. Yeah, so you can't really complain <laughs> about it. No, I don't like it, but I guess I do because yeah, I'm still here. Well, I, don't I guess know. I do like it. What am I'm I doing? Still here. Yeah. yeah so. But in, in the general sense of Utica, like, how, what is your words? Um, if you were, if someone's to ask you, what's Utica like? Oh God, I just think community, mm. like, very supportive. Yeah. So I think that kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. Like I've seen so many people come together, and just with community events and yeah. people being supportive. Yeah. That's really what I think when I think of Utica. And even like the whole surrounding, like yeah. Rome, Utica, all of them, I just think everybody's very supportive and the community piece is huge. Yeah, that's true. I definitely get that sense of... When I first started out here, I didn't get that sense. I feel like people were like dragging each other down, but I do get the community sense now. Like mm -hmm. I do love that part of it. Mm -hmm. I think growth is happening. Yeah. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. I think definitely, especially with like the new hospital and stuff, like I think you're like that whole downtown area, mm -hmm. it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Already it's like... Yeah, yeah. You like look. You're like, wait, the hospital is. It's on <laughs> the <fun."> hospital. <laughs> okay, I, I closed my eyes and it really just opened up. And there's even more added to it. I yeah, feel it's like crazy. And it looks really nice. Yeah, it's gonna look. I nice. might just stroll inside the hospital. Yeah, and just kind of take a look. <laughs> like, oh, what am I doing? Today? I'm just gonna do it at the hospital. But I think they really rebuilt like down there that downtown yeah. Utica. So it's, it's well it's nice. Yeah. So um, you do uh, a number of things. Oh yeah. You want to just clean. list off like yeah. some things that you do? <laughs> so I, I honestly just say like I'm a social seller. Mm -hmm. I really think that kind of puts everything into the box. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we're twins. Yeah, I just, I feel like if you find something you love yeah. and you use, like why is it so bad to talk about it mm -hmm. and share it? True. Um, you know, so I've been in the health and fitness industry for 20, 21, 22 years now, which wow. is crazy. And, um, so I've been in the health and fitness industry. Um, I decided to branch out and become like a virtual, a lot mm -hmm. of stuff's virtual now. And the way I kind of explain that is like, if you're a trainer, say in this area, right? Yeah. People can really only come to see you within a 20 mile radius. If That's you think true. about it in That's person. True. That's true. So you're really like shackling yourself mm -hmm. if you don't get outside of that. Mm -hmm. And you can't like, I've helped people thousands of miles away. Wow. So to be able to do that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And still have an impact on people. Yeah. So that's kind of my biggest thing is health and fitness. But I am really into like wellness and skincare. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly just been the social selling part of it. Yeah. Just, um, you know, finding stuff I love and just talking about it. You're really, um, <laughs> you're, you have positive energy every time I've ever seen you. <laughs> like, <laughs> every time I've ever seen you, I've never seen you upset. Even when you're confused, you're probably smiling. I don't, <laughs> what makes you so positive? Oh, God. Um, just every day being grateful and mm, waking up and like if when my feet hit the floor in the morning, I'm just grateful for what I have. And, yeah. you know, I feel like a lot of us go through a lot of stuff. 
Yeah. And I've been through stuff that people wouldn't even imagine, but I never have ever aired it. Yeah. I've never like, woe is me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just look at like, there's always a positive out of a negative mm. too. And there's a lesson and a blessing with everything in life, you know? Yeah, so true. I just look at every day as like another day you're up. I've got a roof over my head. My son's wonderful. I got food. Yeah. What's not to that's be real, that's positive real. about? That's real. So how, for someone watching the show, what's, what's a way for them to bounce back when they're going through something? Like some advice you would give them? You just have to believe in yourself. Mm. You literally have to believe in yourself. My shirt says and, believe in me. Oh, you see, You can get right that on there, the right? All right. <laughs> as you're saying. No, like just have belief in yourself and, you know, just be be grateful. I think True. that's a big thing. A lot mm. of people, I feel like, are so negative and are so uh, drama filled. And it's just like, listen... You wake up and you got food in your house. You got a bed. You got yeah. a roof over your head. Like right there is what you need. Just be grateful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that turns it around. If you can be positive, then you're gonna have a better impact on your day and That's everything true. moving forward. So how does it feel when people tell you, "Hey, like I feel like what you do is so big because mm-hmm. you're changing people's lives." People that work out and they look towards you to motivate them or to give them the gear or the food to eat. Mm-hmm. That's vital in someone's yes. life. Like people don't realize that till too much later but it's vital in someone's life Mm so when you hear the success stories like how does that motivate you how does that move you it definitely motivates i tell him all the time i'm just like just reading this it just it makes my heart happy if that's a you know what i'm saying if that's a feeling to Mm -hmm. have to know that you've made an impact on somebody changing their life even if it's losing weight if it's you know helping them with um you know like fitness goals or something like just to have that positive impact, like I always say, to make an impact on people, that's huge. Yeah, you know, and that that is life changing. I think that's what's um, what's helped me too yeah. is knowing that um, I've had a positive role in people's lives. No, you do. You know, and I, unexpectedly, I think we spoke about it the last interview. I think it was after the camera shut down, but I would just be scrolling sometimes. <laughs> he said this. I would just be like, all right, today I'm just gonna chill. Like today I'm going to chill. <laughs> And then you pop up smiling like, what did you do today? And I'm like, nothing. All right, let me go to the gym because I am not putting the work in like I should be. But I feel like it's like you're so natural in it. Like that's your natural that's, state. Yeah, yep. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's like some people you can thing. tell like, okay, they're forcing it today. Yeah. You literally wake up like that. I know you do. Yeah. I believe it. No, I really do. I really do. I get my cup of coffee every morning on my the, story. The big, the, <laughs> the big, big jaw, dog. <laughs> the big. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I really do. And I think that, you know, just having that positive impact that I've had on people, yeah. that just obviously helps me to, you know, be more positive too. That's real. Yeah. Do you have, um, is there a certain accomplishment that's going to hit one day in your life that you're going to be like, wow, I did this? Or, oh, yeah. oh let's There's talk about it. Let's talk so about it. I've been in the health and fitness industry, like I said, for 20, 22 years now. Mm-hmm. It's all started, it's so funny because I was literally, working out at the Rome YMCA. And I feel like a lot of people in fitness start out with these little gyms, yeah. right? And they asked me if I wanted to be a spin instructor. Yeah. And I just did it because I was like, well, they paid for everything. Oh, yeah. So long story short, I got into it, became a personal trainer. Wait, spin um, class is uh... like on the bike. Oh, no. Nah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. Let's go, oh, ladies. <laughs> yeah. like, and that right there was my first taste of group fitness classes. Yeah. And if anybody knows me, I've been trainer. I've been working with people one on one. I but group fitness is my heart. Mm-hmm. Like something about motivating an entire room of people. Yeah. Like so, I you know did the whole personal training thing. You know, still worked part time. Mm-hmm. I worked full time. Did that part time. And then I I bet I always say I bet on myself. If yeah. you can't bet on yourself, what do you have left? Exactly. You know. And I bet on myself, and I auditioned mm-hmm. to be a Beachbody Live Master Trainer. Mm. Anybody who knows me, I stand proud. Beachbody is like, I always say I bleed Beachbody blue. Like yeah. Insanity, P90X, all mm-hmm. that type of stuff. So I auditioned to be a Beachbody Live Master Trainer. And what that was is we would go and train the trainers, mm. right? So train I auditioned. Train the trainers, okay. Yeah, so, so you I auditioned. was elite, elite. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. I always tell Eddie, too, I'm like, that was just such a big part of who I was. Yeah. So I auditioned. Uh, first auditions were in LA, were in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And the second auditions were in LA. And I made both cuts. Yeah. Oh, wow. And there was like, I think about maybe 40, 50 of us. And eight of us made it. Really? And um, that was that was so cool for me to mm-hmm. you know become a trainer and then to be go on and train the trainers yes, and though. to lead an eight hour certification where it wasn't just about teaching a class it was like I'm gonna help these people yeah. teach a kick ass class that's dope 
So that was one of my hands down, one of my biggest compliments. Nice I got to, go. to travel, yeah. you know, and I worked I worked directly with Shanti. Mm, really? Directly. That. It was so crazy. Like we talked to him all the time. Would he I remember our, our insanity um mm-hmm. certification where we were master trainers and they when I tell you they they um broke you down to build you back up. Really? And it's I like think, real? Oh like, yeah. like, the, like you, you suck at this yeah. and you you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they literally and I think that was huge because yeah. that helped me. Yeah. Be a better person. Mm-hmm. Help me be a better trainer. Yeah. Help me be a better group fitness instructor. You know, help me learn that. Um, he, I remember he always said this. He said, if if you're teaching a group fitness class, that how you can impact so many people mm-hmm. in such an hour time, right? True. And he said, if you if the room the room was full and you walked into that class and no one knew the you're the instructor, everybody should know you're the instructor as mm. soon as you walked in. And I always took that every class I taught, mm. every class. I feel like you walk in the room like that too. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like you walk in the room like, <laughs> like I feel like you're about to I feel like you're about to interview me. I didn't know what to start asking questions or you were I don't know. But no, I think that that was a good I think that really like taught you on how to oh, yeah. grow. Yep. That's and I dope. led workouts for five hundred people. Mm. Like five hundred. So, oh yeah, I was the lead work like teaching these classes. Okay, now I gotta ask. Okay, I've always wondered this, right? So you're leading the group. You look like you're not sweating. You know the instructor always looks like they're not sweating. Oh, not like, me. <laughs> they're going hard. After, are you like, wow, oh, whooped, tired? Whooped, dead. Really? Like literally, I'm, like, I'm a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Another class, she's going. Oh, yeah. Yes, that is true. But that is true, too. <laughs> oh, if you get another class, you would still do it? Oh, yeah. What that energy from it? Who are you? <laughs> and it would be funny because I would kind of like I would like track at the gym. I'd be like, okay, let me just today is during my class. Like say a certain class I taught and more had to coach. Yeah, you know, like T R X something like that. And I'd be like, I'm gonna take it a little easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, half hour later, I was sweating. I yeah. wasn't even working out, and I would burn 400 calories just for motivating people. That's dope. You know, but that's what people need in a workout. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I think is the is the thing you have to remember when people are teaching group fitness classes is that it's not your workout. Yeah. It's theirs. So now my question to you is, you just said you sweated from just motivating folks. Mm-hmm. What do you think your purpose in life is? Oh, God. My purpose in life is, I think, really to motivate and inspire women to feel confident um, just in fitness and um, just really in fitness, just to feel confident in fitness. And, and comfortable. Just, yeah, and comfortable. I love that. Yeah, because I don't feel like a lot of women do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I feel like um, just not stereotyping that and making them feel confident and comfortable is huge. No, that's real. I'm going to say something I probably never admitted, but um, there was a girl I dated and she was fit, but she was so scared to go to the gym. Mm, and I, I was in the gym all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, just come with me. She's like, no, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to go. Yeah. Well, you see that a ton. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yep. just come with me. You can do that. Well, and I think with group fitness too, it was an on-ramp for people because it was still going to the gym, right? Yeah. The group fitness instructor was still kind of was programming the workout. Mm-hmm. So maybe it was like a step. And yeah. we're like, and then I, what I would find is like, I would then see my girls I was in the classes in the gym. In the gym. That's dope. And they'd be doing things that maybe we did with dumbbells yeah, yeah, yeah. in the class. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? So I look at it as a, as a positive. That's No, it's huge. I feel mm-hmm. like, especially in groups, when you go to like a group workout, it's more like a, a sense of uh, everybody looks crazy, so it's okay. Yeah, so it's okay. <laughs> I have always would tell people, yeah. blinders on. Listen, the person behind you, they don't look like they know what they're doing either, so you should not be worried about what you look <laughs> yeah, like you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's dope. So what else is something that you would accomplish that you're just like, I uh, feel amazing. Like, this is what I did. I feel like I'm still trying to find that, my mm-hmm. answer for that. So me, you telling me this yeah. might help me. Well, I think, you know, me saying health and fitness has been my my on-ramp. And I, yeah. um, I think the master trainer thing was huge. But then I think when COVID hit, I um, developed my own macros class. Mm. And I talk about that a lot. So basically, I've always been my own self-experiment for things. And I always say you're your biggest solution or you can be your biggest problem, especially with food. You can be your biggest solution or you can be your biggest problem. So um, I put together, I I basically just put it out there and I was like, hey, I'm just going to do this macros course. Like it Mm. was not anything, you know, fancy. And I had a ton, I think it was like 100 people. Like it was crazy. So then I was like, you know what? I could put together this course. So we did videos. um, I had graphics made and I put it on a nice website. 
And then it's like a, you know, it's a course. So they get access to it. I do custom numbers for them to figure out how much they should be eating, how many females don't eat enough, Mm. like literally. And um, so that was a big accomplishment for me to to actually publish that course yeah. and to have that content out there. So the the, the 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 serious conversation is how important is eating oh. and going to the gym? I think food is I would say this. I would tell people this. If I could if you could tell me, Aaron, I can't go to the gym today, but I can be on point in my nutrition, nutrition. Really? Over the gym. Yep. Hundred mm. percent. Because so many people like the saying, I know it's cliche, you can't out train a bad diet, but it's true. Mm. There are so many people that work out for hours and hours and they don't look like they work out at all yeah. because they're not properly eating. fueling. Okay. You know what I mean? So, and that could be from under eating, overeating, yeah. eat, not eating the right quantity of foods mm. or quality of foods, but I definitely think nutrition on point is way better than the workout. Is there a really important meal part of the day? Like, is breakfast the most important real meal or is like all meals just as important? Uh, I think it really depends on the person, you mm, know, but I do okay. think breakfast is important, but there's just some people who don't like to eat when they get up. Yeah, you know me, what I mean? I don't. So if that's yeah. you, and like that goes back to your, your you got to experiment with yourself. Yeah. Like I always tell clients, if you don't know what's going on with your own body, mm. how are you going to tell? Like a lot of people will be like, oh my God, I'm, I'm don't feel good. Um, what are you eating? Mm-hmm. Let's take and let's. Look. I was about to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was over here like, dang, you caught me. You caught me. <laughs> okay. I like an apple in the morning, though. Hey, That's all right. Good. But it starts with what you're eating, right? Well, yeah. And I always tell people, like, if you, if you, I'll say, mm. give me three days of what you're eating, mm. right? And say that person is, um, they are, they're feeling bloated, they're whatever. And I'm going to be like, okay, well, you're eating a shit ton of dairy. Mm. Let's remove that for a month. Yeah. That, that scares people, first of all. And it's like, I'm not telling you forever, but yeah. let's see what the culprit is. True. Like, so if you remove dairy for 30 days yeah. and then you reintroduce it slowly, yeah. I always have a system with people. Like you reintroduce it, say week five on a Monday, take note of how you feel. Yeah. If you're fine, then don't reintroduce it again until Wednesday. And you do the same mm-hmm. thing with these highly inflammatory foods, like, yeah. like gluten, all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people literally will be like, oh, my God, I can't believe how much, how better I feel taking out that – it was that one food that yeah. just – like you might be able to have it, yeah. but it might – I can't. Yeah, true. true. So you, how are you going to know if you don't, you know? That's real. And I do enjoy and I do respect and I do love that the fact that you put out on your, on your Instagram for free, you give out weekly – Mm-hmm. food that people can eat for yeah. that week. Yep. I just did a, started like a meal plan thing and I give links to wherever they can find the recipes. That's dope. Yeah. Well, I always have learned through, you know, social selling is you have to give people value. Yeah. That's how people are going to like know and trust you. True. You know, if you're not giving, like how hard is it for me to really like show um, my breakfast and yeah. share it with people? Exactly. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. nothing crazy. You could buy all the ingredients, yeah. but that might be something where people are like, oh man, I can try that, yeah. you know? And sometimes it's just ideas for people. Mm-hmm. So the most important question for you now, um, I think, um, I think it's the first question I had on my list of questions to ask you. <laughs> <clears throat> it is, um, do you have a cheat meal? I haven't really in a while because I don't. Look, I was I was hoping for some reassurance. <laughs> I don't really look at food as a cheat. Like okay. I'll have to say, like I will tell like my macros um, clients. I do like check ins with them, and I will say like have a free meal, mm-hmm. right? Okay. And that's just something that you enjoy, but that might be like you might be okay with not having anything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it just depends. But a lot of people let that be like let that lead into like a whole weekend binge and here they are on Monday starting over again. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So it, I think if you do have like a cheat or treat meal, it should be a meal where you're either out or you don't have take anything home, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, I'm going to have this and dessert and then that's be done with it. Yeah. And the biggest part for that is having people like um, emotionally be okay with that. I yeah. feel like a lot of, especially women, like they think like, oh my God, I just undid all my good work I no mean. yeah you know what i mean yeah. so if, if you have that around it i wouldn't even touch it touch it yeah 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 Yeah. so not only do you do health and wellness you also do your own show mm-hmm. the spotlight the entrepreneur spotlight yes what made you get into that and it's so uplifting <laughs> like, i don't know like it's so like a good time to watch yeah well, we got into it because we were doing back at the gym, the mm. fitness mill, we were doing um, Entrepreneur Spotlights Weekly. We kind of call it that or like Testimonial Tuesday. 
Test Mama Susie. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what we that. were doing is we were um, talking with members that were business owners. Okay. Kind of giving them a little platform too. Yeah. Um, and we just and the funny thing is is that I love interviewing people. Yeah. Like I love it. You're a natural. And my grandmother has been passed away now for 16 years. And mm-hmm. I always tell Eddie this too, is she always said to me, you should go into broadcast journalism. Yeah. Like you should literally be a reporter. Like yeah. you should t- interview people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, now I'm doing it. I love you know? That. I so love that. I just feel like, you know, stuff comes back to circle, Yeah, you know, down the road. And we've just built a, a really cool platform we had you on or we just do these small and highlight everybody because at the end of the day if we can all work together it's powerful you know yeah that's that's dope what is your way of um you might teach me something what is your way of going about interviewing somebody i know it's not the same for everyone right I don't have any questions. I never have any questions. No, no never. <laughs> you just go into <laughs> well, it. Well, what I do is I'll like I'll um I'll look at your social media, yeah. kind of get a feel of who mm. you are. Um, and then recently what I've been doing is kind of asking people, you know, industry questions. So okay. say it's somebody who's in the music industry where Who's your top um, favorite artist? Or right now, what, it is uh, right. Brent Fias. Same thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and always John Mayer. You know who motivated you to become? You know what you are that we're interviewing. You Joe know? Budden and P Diddy. <laughs> 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 no, so we've been asking. I think asking that type of question, and also, um, I like that I've been asking people like, "What is your number one tip for people that are just starting out as an entrepreneur?" My number one tip would be. To believe in yourself. See? Like, <laughs> On the Love TV right now. Uh, All well, right. and most people say that. Or they yeah. say, just start. Yeah, true. That is really huge. I feel like that was like the number one thing that halts people. Yeah. Is like, they come Fear. to me, they ask me, yo, I really want I really want to start this podcast. I really want to do this. I'm just saying, yo, just get started. If you want help, I can help you. But I feel like they start saying, I, I got to wait for this camera to come in. I got to wait for this. I'm like, bro, you can use your phone. It's better than the camera sometimes. Well, and listen, at the end of the day, if people are portraying perfect all the time, chances are it's not perfect. Exactly. So yeah. just get out there and do it. And you know what it. I mean? And fear holds so many people back. And yeah. I see that in the fitness industry and nutrition industry. It's like people are, I can't, I can't do this. I can't. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You just don't want to. Yeah. And it's not a priority. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. You got to make things a priority. You got to know your priorities, actually. Mm-hmm. That's important. Yeah. What do you think is your biggest distraction? Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get caught up in it. Because, like, I feel like it's my job. It is, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, but I have to set, like, more of, like, a time limit for myself to be, you know, because we all can be, like, working and then be, oh, my God, I'm just scrolled through Instagram <laughs> yeah, for an hour. I got nothing yeah. done, you yeah. know? Which I think it's important <clears throat> to engage with people. Yeah. Because you have to show that engagement yeah. with people. So mm-hmm. I think that's important. Um, But I feel like I'm just, I can get lost in it just as I use anybody else can, too. Well, that's true. So. I feel like for my friend uh, Jawan over there, he has to find YouTubers yeah. to uh, help, whatever. Yeah. But then he just gets lost in YouTube. Yeah, he's like, oh, <laughs> shit, it's been hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just gets lost in YouTube. But yeah. it comes with the it comes with the platform. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 real. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. So, um, what do you think is your next step? <sighs> my next step. Let's see. Well, I'm working on something to get back into the fitness okay. industry. Yeah. Um, and I'm really honestly enjoying what we're doing with um, Connected Lens and the mm. Entrepreneur Spotlights and the marketing piece yeah. of it. Yeah. So I see that in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also, I'm always just continuing educating myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing another course and stuff to get, you know, more education. How does someone get, like, in contact with you to be a client oh okay so um they would go to my instagram or my facebook same thing aaron goodman and i have link tree and mm-hmm. i have all of the different link trees there that they Dope. can work with me on mm-hmm. so are you most passionate about interviewing people or just health and wellness oh god i'd say health and wellness still it's really just, yeah it's a big passion of mine but i love the interviewing maybe because it's newer yeah um but i still love interviewing people and i i think i take that into mm-hmm. my health and wellness because yeah. i do kind of interview people when i Take them on as clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's true, too. You do interview as well. And, but you, I don't know. I just see, I've been interviewed by you. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I felt so comfortable being interviewed by you. So I feel like you could just Yeah, a lot of people up, have said that. Yeah. Blow up doing it. Yeah. 
I do really love it. And I just, I um, knock on wood, I always say, like, it does come natural to me. Mm-hmm. So it's it's been fun. So yeah. who knows where it's going to go? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I'm still going to obviously do it. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like health and fitness from a young age has had so much of a big impact on me mm-hmm. that it's just a big piece of who I am. Yeah, sure. You know? So how do you get out of the, I'm going to give up mindset for the people out there? Oh God! How do I, how do they give out of it? How do they give out yeah. of it? Yeah, like how? What is a, some advice you give someone that's feeling like they want to give up? Well, first, what are your priorities? Like, mm. is if this if fitness and nutrition is not a priority and you are literally like just can't do it right now, like that's okay too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But um, I say just start because yeah. I tell people like if you eat three bad meals a day, let's yeah. just say you're starting. How about you start with one healthy meal? Mm. How about if you don't go to the gym at all and you just go out for a walk two days a week? True. So just start, start small. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, everybody starts somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would be teaching group fitness classes and I'd you'd have like your front row divas, we would call them, people that have been, you know, in and the front row. they're good at it. Yeah, yeah and yeah. they're good at it. And people would be like, oh my God, I can't. And I'm like, listen, do you know that Susie Q over here couldn't do a jumping jack two years ago? True. So, True. you know what I'm saying? You got to put blinders on. <laughs> I'd definitely be in the back. He was back. always in the back. <laughs> well, you, you used to go, Ed? Yeah? yeah. yeah. In the back? <laughs> he would get so I'd mad. He would get so mad at me. I'd be in the back, too. I'd be in the back, too. Trust me. He always said I... And I'm also... I'm too, I'm too, uh, I'm too lanky. So, I know. If I'd be jumping up, I'd be crazy. Oh, he'd get so mad. He'd be like... You're doing these shoulder work? You know I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So there was also something you told me that I uh, retained in my brain. How early do you wake up? 4.45. Why? Uh, just because I love having that. I love a routine person. Yeah. Like literally I'm up at 4.45. I have my pre-workout, my water. I'm hitting, I play, press play on my workout by 5.15. And I like to be done. I like to sit and just like little bit of social media, a little bit of work from like yeah. six to seven. It's just a, mm-hmm. a thing for me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like it's a routine, a daily habit. Yeah, so you... And I think like my day would be off if I wasn't up. Really? Yeah. And I work from home. So I guess I always say like I don't really need to be up. But yeah, yeah. I feel like it just sets the tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Wow. So you're huge on planning. Oh, yeah. I write down everything. Cross <laughs> it off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I'm a planner. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's huge. I am uh I'm a huge, huge, huge all my friends either love it or they hate it. I don't know, you should ask him. But <laughs> I'm huge on playing. I think planning is the first step of accomplishing a goal. Yeah. You have to have it written down. You have yeah. to know how you're gonna get from point A to point B. Yeah. And I say that to people, like it goes back to fitness and nutrition. Like, okay, if you have this goal of losing twenty pounds, let's yeah. put a plan. Respectfully. Let's say we're gonna lose five pounds first. Yeah. And then you know what I'm saying? It's not just like jump off the bridge, you're losing twenty pounds tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. That's what people want. Yeah. Quick fixes. So how are we gonna get from point A to point B? Mm-hmm. How are we gonna accomplish that? What are you gonna do to take those actions to get there? That's true. You know? Especially so. if you got that va- that vacation's coming up. Mm-hmm. Plan early. Oh yeah. Don't People start be like, sp- I would lose twenty pounds in two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> Jesus. No, respectfully. When my best friend hit me up and he said, Yo, bro, let's uh we, you coming out to Cali. We got this couple gigs that we're gonna do. I said, Okay. I said, Dope. He's like, it's on a beach. I said, oh, <laughs> I said, oh, all right, let me get right again. <laughs> How much time do I got? A month? No problem. Yeah. We can do something. People are just so on quick fixes and it's like, and that's where that, especially with nutrition, that's where that yo-yo comes into effect. Mm-hmm. Gaining, losing, gaining, losing. And your body's just like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. You know? You also did the um the red carpet for. Yes, less. Yes. Yeah. How did that go? Oh, that was great. That was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, I got to interview a lot of people on the red carpet. Um, I I was calling myself Downtown Julie Brown. Are you I, saw, I saw the caption. <laughs> I saw the caption. I saw the caption. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was a great experience. Um. There was a bunch of different Aaliyah from 360 uh, photo booth was yeah. there, yeah. and it was just a, a new thing for us to do, and we took it with open arms and just embraced it. Now you're it natural fun. in it. Oh, thank you. I've got to keep saying you should keep going with this lane. <laughs> I know he always says too. I love it. Yeah. I really do. I I love it. Everybody that I've interviewed has said, like, you know, like you said, that made them feel comfortable. Yeah. And it's just, you know, I'm just me talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so nothing scripted. So so what is, uh, you guys have a, a podcast yourselves. Mm-hmm. What is that podcast about? Connected Media 315. And we both, we touch base on pretty much everything. A lot of, a lot of nutrition, fitness, mm-hmm. but we have, we plan different topic, topics for the week. Like we're going to relaunch it, I think in December. 
Yeah. So we try to have different topics that mm-hmm. are kind of relatable to both of us, but we, I think our main mission behind it too is mm-hmm. reaching out to, um, you know, d- different business owners mm-hmm. and, um, you know, entrepreneurs and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so do you uh, enjoy, now there's three, do you enjoy podcasting more, health and wellness? Mm. Interviewing. Oh God! I think health and wellness. I really do. Okay, I can talk then? about who, that all the who, time. <laughs> what's, what's second then? What's second then? Podcasting second, or interviewing? I would say interviewing. Yeah. 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 I can see that too. Yeah. I think that's why I did this. Yeah. Because I did have a podcast. Right. Like, well, I still do, but like I had a podcast with four of my friends. Right. And that was dope. But I feel like I always want to get deeper. Yeah, and you could have that connection with yeah, somebody yeah, yeah, and really, and yeah. I try to understand that. Yeah. 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 And I feel like it's kind of killing two birds with one stone. So you're still getting that podcast feel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you're still, you know, interviewing people. So yeah. I would say it would definitely be the um, interviewing the second one. Yeah. So do, do you believe your um, the hardships you go through? How do you get through them? Like, I know there's nobody's perfect. Mm-hmm. I know there's times where we all go through a tough time or mm-hmm. a reset. How do you get past those? I think the biggest thing is just to, um, I think sticking with your daily routine is mm. huge because if if that's something that threw you off course and now you have that routine and, and you let go of that and that's mm. going to throw you off course. And then the other thing I think is leaning in for support, being mm. okay that's with real. leaning in. And I feel like so many people lean out when shit gets tough, yeah. when they really should be leaning in. And if that's a yeah. friend, if that's... I have a lot of virtual groups that I coach, right? Yeah. And I, I always tell them, and is like, guys, um, you're not showing up. Like, I'll reach out to people and be like, what's going on? Yeah. And I tell them, like, lean in. Yeah. Stuff gets hard, lean in, not yeah. away. So I feel like routine, sticking to a routine, um, being okay with asking for help and support, and leaning into that support is big. That's true. I feel like that's probably the best advice because people do not want to get help. They want no, to get through don't. it themselves. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They want to be able to say, I did that myself. Yeah. Or they're just too scared to say. Or they're too proud yeah. that they're like, oh, yeah. I don't really, you know what I'm saying? Which asking for help isn't, and even if it's just like somebody just to talk to yeah. or, you know, sometimes just venting yeah, to somebody. Vent opens up, you know, air is supposed to go through something. Right. So just venting to somebody and, you know, and chances are you don't realize that somebody else has probably been through it, maybe even worse. Yes. Until you talk about it. Yes. So. That's real. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, y'all thinking that I'm taking all this advice. I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking all this advice. <laughs> it's a great interview, but I'm loving the information. I like I like to interview and like learn. You know what I'm oh saying? Oh my god! If you have to be always learning, yeah. I always think like everything you do, you have to be like a sponge and soak it up. Yeah. You can learn from everybody. So now that since you're an instructor, would you rather be a student or a teacher? Teacher. Mm. I love being a teacher. Mm. Yeah, I was a student at first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I love teaching if it's group fitness, if yeah. it's classes, if it's um, like, I feel like almost like interviewing is still like the teacher. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I love that part of it. But mm. I love I love overall just teaching people. Yeah. I'm a stand student role. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like uh, even though I'm, I'm usually told that I'm the teacher, this, this is how I portray myself. But I like to just... Like I'm saying, I always love to learn. Yeah. And everybody I know, like the people that I look up to, thank you guys so much and so often. Like Ed Blackshear. Oh, I love him. He's great. Always says, yeah. yo, they're the ones that help me with this, dealt yep. with that. And that's real because now I know like mm-hmm. yep. I should be looking towards you guys. Yeah. That's no, what I'm sitting here good. learning. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think. And if you, like you said, you are the student and then you can go and teach it. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? So if you learn something, don't just keep it yourself yeah teach other people like that's why i'm always like well, i'm giving free advice on yeah. facebook and instagram because what's it to me to just give value to people you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. i learned it so let yeah. me share it with people yeah yeah, yeah. You know? that's real that's genuine too mm-hmm. so i have some personality questions okay are you ready for them? i'm ready they're pretty hard okay <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie guys they might set you back i don't know first question is what are your top three cereals? Top three cereals. Oh, man. I don't eat cereals. But okay. if I did, it would be Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would one probably, for one so far. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It would probably be Frosted Flakes. Oh, my God. Two for two. <laughs> two for two. And it probably would be Cocoa Pebbles. Wow. 
That's a different one. That's a different one. Okay, I respect it. Coco yeah. Pebble. We were just talking about Frosted Flakes the other day. So good. <laughs> So good. <laughs> so good it's so bad for you. It's so bad for you. <laughs> so bad, but as a kid, oh, my God. Oh, man, the best. I, I used to so hit. Sugar. Yeah, we had more sugar to frost the place. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard somebody say Fruit Loops, and it be hurting my heart. Oh, yeah. Fruit Loops is a sleeper. You know, they be hurting my heart. Like but cinnamon food. toast crunch, oh, that's my Perfect. Yeah. The best. Oh, yeah. The best. Yeah. Come on now. Hands down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, love that. Um, <laughs> Number two. Would you rather... A week of sunny days or a week of warm nights? Sunny days. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I love being outside. If it is, literally, if it's nice and hot outside, I'm like, we got to be outside. We gotta do <laughs> I can't be in the house. Yeah. I literally have to be outside. You got to be active. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. All the time. Okay. Yep. Okay. And number three is what is a question you're still trying to find an answer to? Oh, man. Yeah, I do that. Mm, what's the question I'm still finding? I would honestly think, um, how can I help more people? Mm. Yep. I'm always thinking that. Like, how can I reach more people? Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I always, I, he probably hears, I'm like, how do I, I got to do this, I got to do this, you know, like, how can I help more people? That's yeah. ultimately my goal. That's real. Yep. Because I, I feel like my, my main mission is to, um, you know, have purpose, helping people, but um, making an impact and making an income. I think if you can make an impact on people's life and make an income doing it and lead authentically, yeah. like then you won. You won. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what are some wise words you want to leave the people with? Mm, wise words. I would say just if, like, I'll talk to entrepreneurs, anybody who's trying to start something, it would just have belief in yourself. And um, know that you're not the first person that started something. Mm -hmm. And I would say, like you said, just do it. If it's from a phone, if it's, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, just get started. Because Mm -hmm. fear holds so many people back and Mm -hmm. it's crippling for people. True. That they can watch other people have success and they just don't do it because they're scared. Yeah. You know, and I say jump with both feet in. Just do it. And I always say... Um, don't worry about what anybody other, anybody cares or does or says about you because at the end of the day, nobody pays your bills but you. Real. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about what people say. Real. <laughs> Rent still costs money. The mortgage still <laughs> yes. costs money. Still pay it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's up to you next, brother. Wise words of the day. Well, I think for me is what I got out of this interview mm-hmm. and just this episode, I will say it's, it starts with like the small things mm-hmm. and mindset. Mm-hmm. And I think you're super big on that. And I yes. think you've laid down a lot of gems on not just how to tackle your day and, you know, tackle, you know, whatever challenges or maybe goals you have, but just life. You know what I mean? Like, I think the biggest thing is that I, that I heard you say for me was like, yo, once my feet hit the floor, like. I'm thankful, I'm yeah. grateful, I'm blessed that you mm-hmm. know I've gotten another day to go out one to help people, but to two, um, just bring a positive light into yes. it, regardless of what yesterday brung. So mm-hmm. I think I'm hoping too that everybody when they watch this, you know, hey, things aren't always gonna be great, you know what I mean? And that's just the way of life, but your positivity, your routine and you know, not letting yourself down plays a big part on how you move forward. Yeah. So I thank you for the positive thank you. words and the, and the big gems for sure. Thank you. Yeah. And I always say too, like, I feel like there's a lot more people that have it worse off than you. Yeah, definitely. Sure. So Heavily. you got to think of that. You definitely. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Ed, it's on you next. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So what is some pow- some wise words of the day? It's mindset, man. Just like my man said here, your mindset is everything. And if you can going back to what you guys said about the leader and the follower, student, or teacher, yeah, yeah. teacher, you um, you either have someone who's gonna follow to lead or follow to just follow for the rest of their life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you got to figure that shit out yourself. It's true. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's true. If you want to be a fo- if you want to be a leader, you got to be a good ass follower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you have to follow to lead. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. That's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my wise words of today are. Very simple. I do so many of these that I'm, I'm running out, but I think um, <laughs> my mind is very simple. Uh, drink water today. Yeah, there you go. Drink That's a water. Good one. If you're not, why are you not drinking it? Just drink it. Just it's drink okay. It. It's all right. All right. <laughs> but I thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. It was great. Where can they find you? 
Um, Aaron Goodman on Instagram and Aaron Goodman on Facebook. Real. I'm there all the time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, drink water, drink water. follow the lead. Um, I was going to reset everybody else what they said, but I can't remember fully. <laughs> but be a good person because that's what we're about. The Loft, season four. We're out. <laughs> Don't money sometimes